Alec of the Brookings Institution and author of The Threatening Storm, The Case for Invading Iraq. Chinese President Jiang Zemin spoke about U.S.-China relations during remarks today at the George Bush Presidential Library in College Station, Texas. Former President Bush introduced the Chinese president at this 35-minute event, which includes a question and answer session. My name is Roman Papaduk, and I'm the executive director of the George Bush Presidential Library Foundation. It is my great pleasure to welcome you to the Library Center and to the opening of our fall program series. We have a very special guest with us this morning, President Zhang Zemin of the People's Republic of China. I wish to extend a warm Texas welcome to President Zhang and his delegation. We are delighted that he can be with us here today to share his perspectives on U.S.-China relations. President Zhang will speak for approximately 20 minutes, after which he will take a number of written questions that have been prepared by members of the audience. Uh, we have a capacity crowd, as you can see, and I ask all our guests to please remain seated during the course of the program in order not to inconvenience anyone. I also ask that our guests remain seated at the conclusion of the program until the official party has had an opportunity to leave the auditorium. At this time, it is my great pleasure to call upon the 41st President of the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in a warm welcome for President George Bush. Thank you all. Please be seated. Well, thank you very much. And I just want to welcome the president to this great university and the presidential library. It was a special treat for Barbara and me, uh, for Barbara yesterday and for me to meet her too. Barbara had tea with and I had a chance to meet again Madame Wong, uh, the wonderful wife of President Zhang Zemin. Uh, and I would say to the president offstage that she and you, sir, have been most hospitable to the, to the Bushes when we visit China. And uh, we understand her not being here today, but please give her our warmest regards. It's a special honor uh, to have Chen Shi Shen um, right over here, the Vice Premier of the State Council with us. Would you mind standing, sir? He and, uh, he and his wonderful wife are here. If you don't mind, ma'am, standing. And uh, this, this gentleman knows a great deal about our country. And I can tell you he's done an awful lot to foster relations uh, between the United States and China. Uh, it's also a treat to have, and I don't think I see him. Oh, yes, I do. Uh, the newest Texan from China. Uh, he's right here, Yao Ming. Please stand up. And may I also welcome Ambassador Rant, who is our ambassador to uh, China, and his counterpart, Am Ambassador Yang Zixi, who's the Chinese ambassador to the United States. And, and we have many special guests, but I want one more uh, to introduce Zheng Paiyan, the chairman of the State Development Planning Commission in China. Welcome, sir. We should all be very grateful to President Zhang Zemin for what he has done to keep the United States-China relationship on a sound track and indeed to see improved relations uh, between our countries. There is no question that the people of China treat Americans as friends 
And Mr. President, we certainly feel the same way about the people of China. I have often said that the U.S.-China relationship is perhaps the most important bilateral relationship in the entire world when it comes to trade uh, and more importantly when it comes to world peace. And I'm delighted that tomorrow President Jiang Zemin will be traveling to Crawford, Texas uh, to meet with our president. Uh, Crawford is not too far from here and it is a tiny little town but it has a big heart uh, and Mr. President, you'll see our president in a very relaxed environment where you and he can discuss in total frankness uh, the world affairs and this very important relationship between U.S. and China. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to introduce to you President Zhang Zemin, uh, the President of the People's Republic of China, who is built firmly on Deng Xiaoping's vision and added his own vision uh, and added a principal leadership to the presidency. The President of China, the Honorable Zhang Zemin. Thank you. Sit down, please. <laughs> President Bush and Mrs. Barbara Bush, Dr. Pobaduk, ladies and gentlemen, I am delighted to come to beautiful Texas in this golden fall. May I begin? by thanking President Bush and the Bush Library for holding this function in my honor. This library is a showcase of President Bush's outstanding service to his country, including his contributions to China-U.S. relations. President Bush is an old friend of the Chinese people. In 1974, he went to Beijing to serve as the chief of the U.S. liaison office. He has always supported stronger ties between China and the U.S. I hope that under his guidance, the library will become yet another American center to promote China studies and sign American friendship. Nearly 24 years have passed since our two countries established the diplomatic relationship. The period coincides with China's reform, opening up, and the modernization drive. It, it's during these years, and China produced its success story that the world has become too familiar with. By pushing forward reform, and opening up and focusing on economic development. We have basically put in place a socialist market economy systems and greatly unleashed productive forces. In 2001, China's GDP was 7.4 times that of 1980, representing an average annual growth rate of 9.5%. 
Over the years, 220 million lunar poles have since been lifted out of poverty and ensured their basic needs for food, clothing, and shelter. And China's ethnic groups are now living better and living longer than ever before. By carrying out political restructuring, we have expanded democracy, improved the law of law, and protected our people's rights as masters of the land. China's democratic institutions are growing steadily, both in cities and across the countryside. We have also made rapid progress in culture, science, and education. The access of the Chinese people to education and health care has never been greater. We have conducted extensive exchanges and the cooperation with the rest of the world, and activity drawing upon the good thing from other countries and civilizations. With the WTO accessions, China has entered a new phase of opening up. We were made good on our commitments and open still wider to the outside world. China has now entered a new stage of development with building of a well-to-do society throughout the country. Our objective is to basically make China a modern country by the middle of the century. Despite our accomplishment, China remains a populous development country. We still lag behind the developed countries in product forces, as well as in science, technology, and education. It will take as many years of hard work to achieve modernization and deliver a more comfortable life to our people. This November, the Communist Party of China will convene its 16th National Congress, where some strategic decisions will be made on advancing our agenda at all fronts. We will act in accordance with the three represents. That is to represent the requirements of the development of China's advanced productive forces, to represent the orientation of the development of China's advanced culture, and to represent the fundamental link interest of the overwhelming majority, majority of the Chinese people persist in taking economic development as our central task. Promote social undertakings in an all-round way and achieve a coordinated development of the material, political, and spiritual civilizations in Chinese society. Ladies and gentlemen, the more developed 
and the more open China is. The greater our need for an international environment of peace and stability. Strengthening peace and the development at both regional and global level serves China's interest. The Chinese nation has inherited from ancient time a fine tradition of honesty, harmony, and good faith, values that China abides by in the conduct of relations with other countries. The very purpose of China foreign policy is to promote world peace and the common development. Confucius said more than 2,000 years ago, in human relationships, a gentleman seeks harmony, but not uniformity. That is to say, harmony without sameness, reserving differences without coming into conflict. Harmony promotes coexistence and co-prosperity, whereas differences foster mutual complementation and mutual support. Indeed, harmony without sameness is an essential factor of harmonious development of our civilizations. Our world is a diverse and colored, colorful place. It is perfectly normal for things, countries, nations, or regions to be different one way or another. This, to a certain extent, is inevitable. We believe that the world's civilizations, social systems, and the development models can work together. They can learn from each other's strengths in a peaceful competition and seek common ground while putting aside differences. As a country in the Asia Pacific, China deeply cares about peace and the stability, stability in the region. In the spirit of good neighborliness, we have resolved the land boundary questions with most of our neighbor through negotiation. We have joined the ASEAN in formulating a code of conduct in the South China Sea area. China lives in peace and harmony with all its neighbors. China is an active participant in APEC, ARE, TANG plus three, and other multilateral mechanisms. We have issued with Asian members framework documents on closer bilateral cooperation in a new century and dedicated to set up a China Asian free trade area in 10 years. China is a staunch force dedicated to peace in the Asia-Pacific Asia region. The U.S. is major Pacific power. We stand ready to work with the United States and other countries in the region to promote peace and prosperity. 
a peaceful reunification of China with an early solution of the Taiwan questions in conducive to peace and stability in Asia Pacific and the world at large. It serves a stable and growing China-US relationship and will provide more effective safeguards to U.S. interest in Taiwan. In Earth 1995, I put forward an eight-point proposal on the solution of the Taiwan question. Our commitments are clear. After reunification, Taiwan may maintain its economic system and lifestyle. After each will manage its party, government, and military affairs on its own. And the rights and interests of people in Taiwan will be effectively protected we have the maximum, maximum sincerity, and we will exert our utmost efforts to make peaceful reunification a reality. In recent years, personnel exchanges between the two sides of the Taiwan Strait have been a steady increase. Interactions in economic, culture, and other fields are expanding. The people in Taiwan share our strong desire for an early opening of the three direct links. In solving the Taiwan question, no formula is better than peaceful reunification and the one country, two system. And nothing threatens peace and stability in the stress mode. Then Taiwan independence. The U.S. has repeatedly reaffirmed its commitment to the three Sino U.S. joint communics and the one China policy. We hope the U.S. side will stick to the right position. Ladies and gentlemen, we remain confronted with many challenges in today's world. Terrorism, the spread of weapons of mass destruction, regional conflicts, and environmental degradation, just to name a few, all pose a serious threat to peace and development. Both China and the U.S. are victims of terrorism. In the war against the terror, the Chinese and Americans have stood together and carried out effective cooperation. China will continue to step up its consultation and cooperation with the U.S. on counterterrorism and join the rest of the world in the concerted fight against this common scourge. To prevent the spread of weapons of mass destruction, maintain peace and stability on the Korean Peninsula, South Asia and the Middle East, and protect the world's environment. These are major concerns to people around the world. China 
and the U.S. ought to enhance cooperation in these spheres. For this serves the common interest of the two countries. We are ready to stay in touch and cooperate with U.S. in search for a fair solution to these problems and promote peace and stability in the world. China is the world's largest developing country, and the U.S. is the largest developed country. Our economies are complementary, and our cultures have distinctive features to make it as proud. There exist vast potentials and broad prospects for bilateral cooperation. In the economy, trade, energy, environment, science, technology, education, and other fields. A consultative and cooperative relationship between us is in the fundamental increase of the Chinese, in the fundamental interests of the Chinese and American, and meets their common aspiration. The development of such a relationship is bound to make our two people both winners. Let us keep up our good work, increase our understanding, expanding our consensus, and enhance our cooperation so as to build an even better future for China-U.S. relations. Thank you. Mr. President, now I'll be happy to take your questions. Mr. President, thank you very much for that wonderful presentation. I do have a number of questions that have been posed by members of the audience, and I would like to address those to you now. Question number one, Mr. President. We at Texas A&M University are pleased to have cooperation with China on agricultural science and technology. Do you believe that sharing technology and science between the United States and China is important for both countries? We are very happy to have a very good cooperation with China and agricultural science. Mr. President, do you think that the cooperation between the two countries is very important for both countries? 我想，农业，中国有一句老话叫“民以食为天”。毫无疑问，在农业这一方面，我们两国都有很大的关系。当然，你们的农业生产力要比我们发展的快得多。我们要向你们学习。啊 ，Of course, agriculture is very important. As an old Chinese saying goes, "Food is the top priority for people." So it goes without saying that. Cooperation in the field of agricultural science and technology is important between us. And of course, the United States is more advanced when it comes to the agricultural productive forces. So we need to learn from you. Please. Second question, Mr. President. What cultural exchange programs has China and the United States taken part in recently? Hmm. Second 我想，我们中美两个国家所进行的文化活动是很多的。那么，比如说是我们的交响乐队，我们的
呃许多的访问学者，我们的许多的呃搞文学的、搞科学的这许多方面都有很好的往来。Well, actually, there are too many to name here. For instance, we have the exchange programs of the Symphony Orchestras. We have also visiting scholars, artists who are engaged in exchanges of literature works, and etc. So there are too many. 我想，关于文化这一点，促进相互之间的文化了解是太重要了。世界上有这么多国家，但是相距也很遥远，所以怎么促进两国人民之间的相互了解？这一点是太重要。Cultural exchanges actually is very important for promotion of mutual understanding. There are so many countries in the world, and for some of them, they are geographically speaking far apart from each other. Therefore, it's very important for us to work to improve mutual understanding between people of different countries. 我想在这一方面，布什总统，包括我们的 Scott Craft。都做得非常好了。那么我今天到这来发表的演说也是所促进友好的工作。I think as far as this is concerned, President Bush, General Scowcroft have made important contribution, and I think this is also the purpose of my being here, giving the speech and taking the questions. 总之，可以逐步逐步的能够促进相互之间的了解。All in all, these programs can help. Gradually to improve our mutual understanding. Thank you, Mr. President. What has China recently done concerning panda conservation? The second question is, regarding the protection of the panda, China has taken what steps recently? I'm sorry, but I'm an electric power engineer. I'm an electric power engineer. <laughs> 我和你们一样，对熊猫非常喜欢它，但是对它也不是有太多的研究。Like you, I like panda so much, but I'm no expert in a panda. <laughs> yeah, I were according to the Confucius said, 知之为知之，不知为不知，是知也。So uh, I need to uh, quote another saying by Confucius. Those who know admit only what they know as what they know, and admit what they don't know as what they don't know is true learning. Well, I was thinking, ah, our professional panda conservation expert will definitely be working diligently. 从事于这方面的工作，来改进这个对熊猫的饲养。嗯。But I'm sure we have very devoted Chinese experts in the field of panda who will concentrate their efforts on improving the environment for panda. You can rest assured. Thank you. Mr. President, this is an extremely important question for this audience. Considering that your country grows such great basketball players, do you do you have any tall young men interested in coming to Texas A&M for, for a great education and playing basketball? Ah, 最后一个问题是对我们学校来讲特别重要的一个问题，因为中国呢培养了很多了不起的篮球运动员。我想问呢，在中国这些大高个的这些篮球运动员当中，有这些高个的年轻人当中，有没有人有兴趣啊，到我们这个大学来，既接受良好的教育，又参加我们的校篮球队？那<笑>这这这这这，在 stand up please， 姚明在那儿呢。<笑>这张牌是张牌是，侬侬是上海人啊 ？You're from Shanghai。那那你你应该说是典型的高个你你现在多一点多少？两米二五。哦。Two point two five. Marvelous。那我我跟你相差太远了。
我儿子有一米七四，那真是差别的。我看就就是那个布什总统啊，跟你也不能比。<笑> You are much taller than I am. I'm only 1.74 meters. You are even taller than President Bush. <laughs> Mr. President, that concludes our question period. I want to thank you once again for your wonderful presentation, and I want to wish you and your delegation a warm and successful visit in our country. Thank you very much, Mr. President. <laughs> 呃、uh, ，session at many of our numerous programs that we have planned. Just to outline a few of them, on November 6th, we do have Mr. Dick Kovacevic, CEO of Wells Fargo, who will be speaking about business ethics here. And then on November 15th, we do have U.S. Secretary of Labor Elaine Chao, who will be addressing the issue of volunteerism and, and education in the Bank of America program. Um, we also plan to have sometime in December Carl Rove, who is the senior advisor to the president at the White House. Thank you once again for coming, and the door should open momentarily. Thank you. The Chinese president meets with President Bush Friday at the Bush Ranch in Crawford, Texas. This weekend, both leaders will attend the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Meeting in Mexico. C-SPAN 2. And here's what's coming up tonight. Next, an organization called Veterans for Common Sense held a news conference today 